Thank you all very, very much. Um, just before we start, I, the concourse team have apologised for the air conditioning. They're trying to fix it, but you may have noticed that the air conditioning's off. Um, children, you can take your blazers off, but if you do, you've got to tuck your shirts in. Okay. <laughs> Um, I didn't think I'd ad lib tonight. I actually wrote a speech. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls, parents and friends of John Collett School. I'd like to stand, extend to you a hearty welcome, very, very hearty welcome tonight, and a very special welcome to Jonathan O'Day. Um, Jonathan O'Day is our local member, um, and he very, very kindly joins us every speech night for our prize giving. And thanks also to Mr. Philip Wolfers, the chairman of the board, for his very, very kind words, and our illustrious board itself. I have great admiration for our board. Um, it works tirelessly for the school. It keeps the school on track. And uh, before I begin my formal remarks, I'd like to express my appreciation and my gratitude. And it's to everyone here tonight. It's to the whole school community, to the parents, the teachers, the office staff, and the children. Uh, for your generosity, your kindness, and your unfailing support over the past year. So thank you all very, very, very much. A speech night is held during the approach to Christmas, um, and Christmas is the anniversary of an event which was enormous significance to mankind. It's become a custom on these nights, and it was started by Mr. Maine, to take a theme from the Christmas story. I, I actually had to sort of look quite a bit, and I found a theme in the story of a family, and it's a family like we are families, and in particular a young girl, and this young girl responded to the call of the absolute. The story of this young girl, Mary, is one of love, of devotion, of sacrifice and service. When the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary to tell her that she'd bring forth a son and that she, he would be called Jesus and he'd be the son of God and he'd be the savior of mankind, she did wonder, and she wondered quite rightly, how could this be as she'd never known a man? And the angel replied that for God, all things are possible. And she had complete faith in this, and she had no doubt. And she replied, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. She was unhesitating and unequivocal in her response, with full faith in the absolute. And sort of when I read this, I wondered how I would respond, you know, how we would respond. It's not an easy call, betrothed, not married, having never known a man, but to bear in your womb the saviour of mankind. When Mary visited her cousin Elizabeth, who was also with child, she said to Elizabeth, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit doth rejoice in God my saviour. For behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. I think the striking thing, the thing that strikes me, is that she was obviously full of joy and courage. She responded joyfully and courageously, and she didn't hesitate. And I consider each and every day of our lives were asked to actually respond to whatever is placed in front of us. And the question I ask myself is, how do I respond? Right? How do we respond? How do we step up to the plate? How do our children respond to situations? And the other thing is, what is it that actually enables us to respond or not? Because we can't really change what life presents on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but there's one thing that we do actually have control over, 
and we have control over how we actually meet situations. And as you probably gather, I have a lot of admiration for the children because every day I see the children meet situations with friendship, laughter, joy and courage. It's not always the case, but it's more often than not, and it's most of the time. And many of them are unhesitating in their response to others and also to the need of the situation. And the essence of this ability to be able to actually step up to the plate, to step up to the mark, seems to be stillness in the emotional world. And stillness is the first of John Collett values. It's at the core and heart of what we do and what we believe. And it runs through every other value. It permeates them in the same way that water permeates the soil. It nourishes, it allows life and happiness to flourish. We as teachers ourselves practice stillness, and so also do the children. And we do this so that we learn how to remain still in the emotional world, when everything around us in the physical world and the mental world is moving. If we as teachers and the children alike can learn to find this stillness within ourselves and the children find it within themselves and not be moved too much by external circumstances, then everyone benefits. And in this, we can step up to the plate. We can step up to meet the need. We may not have to meet it in the way that Mary did, but we still have to meet whatever is presented to us each and every day. And stillness helps us to meet this with good grace and generosity. When we get caught up in mental movement, our vision and our circle tend to be limited, and so also is our awareness. What I find is that we develop a type of tunnel vision, which is a very limited use. The wise tell us that the faster one moves, the smaller the awareness. When the awareness is narrow and is limited, we tend to feel small, helpless, emotionally bereft and trapped. We feel separate and we are not all that inclined to let others into our heart or our world. If we feel like this, it's very difficult to step up to meet a need greater than our own. But of course, this smallness and sense of separation is not the truth of the matter. The truth is that the stillness and freedom are always there, but we do have to avail ourselves of it. This is what we know and understand. And as the children continue to practice stillness, they too learn that the stillness is always there. And equally importantly, they learn how to reach that stillness and how to access it. And they know that it's real. When we access the stillness, our world expands, our awareness becomes larger, and this is the real wealth. It's the real treasure. And we have a feeling of wealth and freedom. And we can take that with us wherever we move or wherever we go in the world. We can live in a large world and experience a sense of unity rather than separation. And this sense of unity enables us to lend a hand, to help a friend, to meet whatever comes our way with a positive attitude. It's a glass half full rather than a glass half empty. It enables us to meet situations joyfully and courageously as Mary did over 2,000 years ago. I'd now like to conclude my remarks by mentioning two young people who have stepped up to the plate. And let's keep in mind that they're two of many. We have many, many children. Our children step up to the plate every single day. 
and they, these have happily met situations with courage, dedication and service and they have understood the value of stillness in all of this. Elliot Madden Khan and Lone Fotis have followed in the footsteps of a long line of admirable office holders and have kept up their fi this fine, fine tradition of office holders at John Collett very admirably. The <laughs> there, let's do it. There. Yeah. I, um, look, the sixth class children have been amazing this year. Um, I talk about stepping up to the plate. They have stepped up to the plate on a fairly continual basis. And the head boy and head girl have done a wonderful job, and so have all the other office bearers. And the final duty of the head boy and head girl is to pin the badge, or all of our office bearers, is to pin the badges of office onto their successors later this evening. And their second last duty is to give the valedictory address. On behalf of the graduating sixth class, I therefore, it gives me great pleasure to invite the head girl for 2015, Miss Lone Fotis, to the stage to give her speech. <laughs> 